Citizen space these days is a thing. Uh, we're not just talking about looking at astronomy data, as exciting as that is for a number of us. We're also talking about building your own spacecraft. So what I'm showing here is a picture of a thing called a CubeSat. Uh, has anyone heard of a CubeSat? Richard, raise your hand. I won't call on you there. Great. So maybe a quarter, a third of you. A CubeSat is a satellite. It's essentially an open source platform. Uh, they're about this big. Uh, or if you want to build a triple size one, they get to be about that big, you know, about like a 3U, they call it, three units worth of CubeSatery. A uh, 10 centimeter cube up to maybe 30 by 10 by 10, and even some larger ideas. The cool thing about them is that you can build them based on plans that exist online. The specification for these to allow you to launch this thing is only a few pages long. So unlike a typical NASA program where there's thousands of pages of documentation, exquisitely designed hardware, these things you can 3D print. In fact, you can also buy the parts online if you want to. So for a few thousand bucks, you can be in the space business. You can actually buy yourself a spacecraft or build it for even less money. Uh, there are also some spacecraft out there that have been built with Arduinos as their, their brains. Uh, well, oh, I actually got a spacecraft in my pocket here I should show you. Where'd that thing go? Okay, here it is. So here's a satellite. If you come by the NASA booth, we're in the Maker Pavilion out there, uh, you will see some of these. So this is actually not a NASA project, but some NASA folks are helping out with it. This is something called Sprite. It's a project run by a graduate student. He got Kickstarter funding. I think he was asking for about $30,000 on Kickstarter. He ended up with about $78,000. Uh, as the premium, you get to have a spacecraft. So of course, that appealed to a lot of people. Uh, everything he needs on here, you can barely see the antennas, I think, but a little, let's do it like this, a little 90 degree dipole antenna, solar cell right here. That is an MSP430 chip from TI. You may know about that. And he's actually running an emulator of the Arduino on there, so in fact you can code it as Arduino code. There's also a spacecraft called ArduSat, which is an Arduino-based CubeSat. So these things are just popping up like weeds, which is fantastic. Um, and how they deploy is kind of cool too. If you look right here on the right side, it's hard to tell, but there's a spring-loaded uh, box. You just stuff the spacecraft in there, close up the lid, it goes into space on a rocket, probably as a secondary launch, where some primary spacecraft is paying the bills, and these guys get to ride along for hardly any money. And then when all the good and expensive stuff is done and out of the way, you pop these spacecraft out, and off you go. So uh, we like this idea at NASA for a variety of reasons. We think that the prospect of having thousands of individual spacecraft sensing phenomena you could never sense with a large aperture spacecraft is really appealing. They're never going to replace the Hubble Space Telescopes or the James Webb Space Telescopes. Uh, maybe someday we'll have micro rovers, who knows. But you know, for now, I think this is coming from a very different direction. And it, it, uh, it inspires something very different in us. It's not uh, being inspired by the Apollo scale exciting programs, as cool as those are. This is actually about an intimate connection between you and space. You get to be in space. In a very real way, NASA is your space program. And now you can be part of it in a way that uh, I think growing up, uh, being the kid who watched Apollo on TV when he was two, um, that I always wanted to be. And, and now we can all do that.